All right, I've been told that I'm live. So welcome everybody. This is definitely not Cuphead. Uh, <laughs> this is something completely different. This is a Skulljacker Revolt of the Wessicans for uh, the SNES. And it's probably one of those games for the SNES that you may not have heard of really. Um, but it's definitely an interesting one. It's basically a platformer with uh, lots of bubblegum. And you'll see that soon enough. So I guess without further ado, let's just uh, go into the game. And I'll talk some more about the story. There's a lot of uh, storyline in this game, or at least in the manual. Okay, so countdown in three, two, one, go. So, welcome to the island of Westica, which seems like, uh, it looks like a, another continent that you might have uh, heard of. So, Skulljagger is not the main name of this character, it's uh, the name of the main villain. Um, he's um, holding the um, population of the island of Vesica uh, captive and Skulljagger tries to prevent that. And, uh, or uh, Storm Jackson, as our hero is called, uh, tries to prevent that and he does that by wielding the sword and blowing lots of bubblegum. And yeah, the funny thing is this uh, sword is not actually his, he stole it from Skulljagger and uh, the story starts off with uh, Skulljagger wanting his sword back, so you know, you can tell that Skulljagger isn't uh, too pleased. So, you, as you may already tell, uh, there's lots of uh, gems here and there. Um, I have these red gems that I uh, can use to fire off projectiles, which is very handy for uh, defeating enemies at a certain distance, uh, as you see here. You have these bluer gems, these deep blue gems, which are checkpoints. And also we have green gems, uh, which are basically used to collect, but you try to collect gems throughout the game anyway, because this has a Sonic-like system in terms of uh, gems, except you don't get to keep the rings. Um, you just hope uh, to keep some at least, but if you get hit by anything, any enemy, you won't uh, get them back. So that's kind of an interesting uh, touch, to say the least. So now we get past those flies, get up here. In the beginning it's uh, yeah, pretty simple enough actually. Uh, just like this. And well, so we have uh, all kinds of uh, bubblegum too. What you see in the menu, or what you see in the interface, is basically me having uh, cherry bubblegum right now, which is one of the types of bubblegum which will be very crucial in speedrun because it allows for some significant skips. And the first one that's upcoming is already happening in um, this level, basically, as we head into a warehouse, as it turns out a pretty big uh, warehouse. So, and here we have uh, dudes who are slinging uh, skulls, which are pretty scary, and um, this game has a thing with hitboxes where uh, they tend to be somewhat unpredictable, so you have to watch out for uh, whatever's uh, coming your way. On the other hand, um, you also have um, some room to wave your sword uh, yourself, so that's pretty cool too. Also, there's bats in this game. Bats can be real jerks, but they're not the only enemies. In the meantime, you hear uh, some uh, really hot gems. Especially the bass in this game is really good. The composer of this game is Dave Hayes, and he also worked on a couple of other things. Um, I'm not sure which uh, games exactly, but you can look it up on uh, Moby Games, for instance. So this is where we use the uh, cherry bubblegum. You use that to skip a tiny part. Um, otherwise, we'd have to walk all the way around there to get up there, but this skips it all together. I used to do this with another type of bubblegum, uh, grape bubblegum which we'll see later on as well. But that's a lot slower and it takes forever to um, stop working. But yeah, that was a pretty nice level and that brings us into uh, level three. So this game works with uh, chapters because you know, it's a story basically. And every, st um, every chapter has four levels that we play through. It all ends with a boss fight. So it's uh, got a pretty uh, set structure as it is. Shouts to Pimp's Bakery. Here's where it becomes a bit more sketchy, I guess, because I don't have a red gem anymore. Um, the, f the thing is, you lose your red gems before you lose any green gems that you might have, so that sort of allows you to get hit twice before you die. But it's always nice to have red gems because they uh, serve as a sort of extra protection. And yeah, so here's where we first pick up our uh, first instance of 
uh, great bubble gum, which used to be the absolute best uh, bubble gum in the game. And well, it still is. You'll see that soon enough. It's actually a very OP uh, boss killer, as will be evident soon enough. And also, uh, Shoutouts to this uh, wonderful victory pose. I'm pretty sure uh, people have already uh, seen that and be like, oh my god, it's pretty awesome. And it is. I have this uh, Franco Facey emote <laughs> because it's just that good. All right, so first we fight Skullchecker. It's funny, you fight the main villain a couple of times in this game, and this is the first round. And yeah, this is basically the effect of great bubblegum on bosses. It's really OP, like I said. And now we get a passcode, Cruel Man, Cruel Bird. So that's uh, the main um, yeah, password system in this uh, game. It's word-based and it gets such wonderful poetic things such as Cruel Man, Cruel Bird. There's going to be a couple more uh, things later on. First off, we uh, head into the sales because... Uh, oh, I've never seen that before. No? <laughs> that looked really weird. Anyway, so now we hop on board a ship, uh, this gem rod ship. And there's definitely some gem rods, as well as lots of enemies. And now we are introduced to these enemies uh, that the novel or the story refers to as snap rats. Well, they're basically rats with uh, very long tails. And as you can tell, very big hitboxes, so uh, that can be a pretty scary thing. Especially if you're not having any gems at all. But yeah, apart from that, this is a really short level. The levels kind of vary in length. Some are like... Uh, they always feel like fillers in a way, but um, some are a bit more um, expensive and more uh, stretch out and such. So now we actually go into the ship. Kill a couple of uh, enemies. I shouldn't call them pirates. Um, apparently there are no uh, pirates in this game according to the story. At least there's no single mention of the word pirate, so just so you know. Also, uh, this is a mask which grants you invincibility for a brief bit. We used to pick it up for the speedrun, um, but the main downside is that you can't do anything else, so you can't climb ropes or anything, so uh, I don't pick it up anymore and instead I get rid of these uh, snap rats. That mask is a reference, apparently, to what they call in the story Mask Day, which is the only day in the year that the people of Westicar are truly uh, free and they're just uh, celebrating for a brief bit. Um, they're free from working in the so-called uh, Gemerald Mines. And people will tell stories of Westica before she took Gold Jagger and all that. It's very funny that um, they were very ambitious in the plans to make this like a full-fledged thing. Like, they have this story, um, which is basically like almost 80 pages long, so it's pretty... Uh, pretty big actually, but almost none of it really translates into the game sadly, which would have been interesting. So in the previous level we picked up a cherry, or not a cherry, a grape bubblegum, which we will once again carry over into uh, the next level because, surprise surprise, we'll be using it for another boss fight. No need to worry about these uh, bugs, they just uh, fly over us. I'm gonna grab something here for safety, because I will probably be taking some damage here. Uh, hopefully not. Okay, that's pretty good. Sort of allows me to do a damage boost through that bat, and that's pretty cool. Victory pose once again, and we fight a another bus. I can tell you, it's not Skulljacker this time, but it's gonna be the same setup, really, because, you know, we have Great Bubblegum, and what do you do with that? Well, you do things. Namely, we just stand over here, defeat this massive rat, no worry about anything else. So what you saw me pick up just now is uh, orange bu uh, flavored Bubblegum, which allows you to spit tiny bits of Bubblegum, basically as if they were projectiles. And that would have been a pretty handy alternative of uh, taking out this enemy, because normally speaking, uh, you would try to head over to the left side and keep on attacking for as long as possible, because otherwise um, the rat will catch up on you, and that's uh, it's a lot more difficult than this uh, cheese strat for sure. All right, in chapter three, um, we are in the jungle, and 
we finally realized that this is not an ordinary sword that we're having here. Um, turns out that this sword can talk. Uh, there's a voice inside, and it is a voice of the king of a so-called lost city of Urnum, which, um, well, we'll be visiting eventually. But it also tells us of um, you know, weapons that are hidden there. And um, it used to belong to Skulljacker, but Skulljacker never got the... Uh, what you call it? Um, Never had the, uh, yeah, never got accepted by uh, the king, really. So uh, th that was basically because they didn't want Skulljacker to find the weapons. Okay, so here's where we use our bubblegum guns again. I hope I do it well, but it's a bit hard to set up. Ideally, I would have gone all the way up there and uh, I would have made quick work of this, but it took a bit more time. You can make a massive leap here, actually. And um, the funny thing is, if you reach all the way to the clouds, the clouds will actually break your bubble gum. So that's a pretty interesting uh, thing. That's also a sort of a speed tech thing, I guess. All right, I'm gonna head over to uh, one part here in the next level where I'm gonna set up for a skip with a cherry bubble gum. But I guess now is a good time for donations or uh, any other info. Of course, uh, we have a $10 donation from Race of Flame Kun saying congrats on all the wonderful runs so far and good luck to all the runs in the future. Special shoutouts to Tayman NB for his Puzzle League run and I wish him good luck on his run. Meaning of course the Pokemon Puzzle League run that we will have on Monday morning, at least European time that is. So probably tune in for that. And I would like to remind you guys that we're raising money for ESA to cover some of the costs that will probably come up in this current pandemic of COVID-19. And if you want to like to donate, we would greatly appreciate it. And every sub that you uh, do to this channel will get matched by $2.50 by HyperX. So maybe consider subscribing with Twitch, Twitch Prime or with just a normal sub as well. Thank you. All right, thanks uh, for the donations. So here's where I'm going to set up for uh, this... Uh, strat here. We're gonna use a bubble gun to just get ourselves all the way up here and I hope that I can get this right. I gotta make sure that this bat doesn't appear until later and this um, skips a lot of chain climbing here so uh, I actually got it so that's really cool and I also have another gem here which I can use to uh, de defeat this enemy over here and I grabbed the cherry from beyond the finish line because I'm gonna set a, uh, I'm gonna use that to set up for another skip. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of those. I, I told you, cherry in this game turns out to be extremely strong. So, but we're gonna use it right away over here. So what I do there, um, normally speaking, you use one uh, button to um, activate the bubble gum, but there are actually two buttons on uh, the SNES controller that basically do the same thing and if you press them both at the same time it does um, allow the gum to be blown up quicker than normally so uh, that way you don't have to mash and that's pretty cool. So in this level we just uh, climb some ladders uh, and sometimes just jump on barrels because that's a thing too. Um, here we grab another um, great bubble gum because guess what there's another boss coming up going over here. Here's a pretty scary section. Uh, it's got some claws here, but in this case no worries because we just go through everything. Because there's also a gem at every single claw that you see there, so you can just damage boost through literally, uh, literally everything. And um, if you have some gems beforehand, this is no big deal whatsoever. Okay. Plus fight. And it's called Jagger once again. It's basically the same fight as uh, last time, uh, except we're here. And I go over to the right side because um, on the left side are a couple of items which do cause lag, funnily enough. So I go over here to speed things up. If we get a password, Skull Jagger uh, runs off. Can't walk on water, uh, or can't walk in the air apparently. Skull Jagger is uh, pretty special. So. From the big wild angry fly, we're going to this chapter. I 
As you may have noticed, this song sounds a little bit like the Eye of the Tiger, especially in the beginning. I keep humming the Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> but there's a lot of uh, serious good gems here. I like them. The main thing is, um, there's not a lot of variation in those uh, tunes. Like, the main thing that's um, done here is they sort of alternate between, you know, tunings or whatever and um, not much else. But what's there is really good and pretty legit. Oftentimes with these enemies, uh, whenever they th uh, fire at me or throw grenades at me, I try to take out both the bullets and the uh, enemy uh, itself. With the right timing, that's also not too much of a big deal, but it can also mess up pretty badly, so you still have to watch out, I guess, but uh, yeah. Oh yeah, now we have snakes, because there's one thing that was missing from this game, and that's snakes, of course. So here we go. Nice and easy. Taking advantage of the fact that we have a red gem, so we can use it there, like, right away. I don't think I've talked about these enemies yet. In the story, they're referred to as uh, black masks. In this case, I usually call them flying ninjas because you know they kind of look like they're sort of flying around, the, uh, flying around, and they look like ninjas. So you know, flying ninjas it is for me. It's going up here. So there's going to be some uh, skips coming up pretty soon, or at least one major skip, um, which did bring the time of this run down to uh, several minutes faster, actually, which is uh, pretty cool. More snacks. Depending on where, the, where they are and depending uh, if it's a slope or not, it can be pretty uh, tough to take them out, but uh, you just have to be patient with them, I guess. That's probably the right thing to do. Okay, I'm gonna take this one out. There we go. Okay, we're getting close to the end of this level. Just gonna... I technically didn't need to do that because I do have gems, so I could have taken a damage boost there, but it's always nice to have a bit of a buffer, I guess. So, we go back to uh, Cherry Bubblegum, which we picked up at the beginning of the previous level. Um, we're gonna use that to basically skip the entire level, so brace yourselves. First, we take out, uh, care of the snap rats, do this, and there we go. So we have a couple of visual cues here that we uh, use in order to set ourselves up uh, pretty nicely. So that we know when to uh, get to certain gaps, I guess, like with those uh, snap rats. Now we follow this uh, wooden uh, pole here, go over here. Gotta make sure uh, that I set this up right so I don't uh, have my gum kicked uh, by a ninja, because that can happen too. I've had that happen recently, actually. Also, I shouldn't hear the staircases, because those can break my bubble gum too. There's some really weird unwritten rules in that regard, although it's pretty logical, but you still don't expect it, considering there's so much that you skip. But anyway, that's uh, how the skip works. You get to the end of the level like instantly, so this is like the ultimate cheese strat. It was fun, really, uh, because we had this uh, at some point in Speed Bomb Don't Run uh, for a speed run improvement uh, type of thing. And that was one of the things that was found, and that was really exciting to see how that uh, evolved, really. I'm not sure if I set this up correctly. I had one more... Uh... Okay, there we go. So, yeah, now we have another gum, which is this green bubble gum, and I'm not actually 100% sure which flavor it is. Um, some say it's lime, some say it's lemon. GameFAQs refers to this as watermelon, and it doesn't seem like watermelon to me, to be honest, so... Okay, um, I didn't set it up entirely right, but that's fine. We still have a lot of lives, and we have one continue, so... Uh, worst case scenario, we can still do quite a lot here, uh, quite a lot here, so... Gotta watch out, of course. <laughs> I should uh, grab both of these. Uh, there's a green and a red gem. You don't see the red gem like right away, but it is there. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, take advantage of that. So uh, I'm gonna pick this up later. Let's see, where is it? Ah, huh, it's over here somewhere. There we go. 
Okay, should be good. Okay, I think we're good now. I have a certain way of setting this up, but I need these uh, battle dogs, uh, bell dogs to be triggered too. So my va my main cue is I stand over to this um, pillar, and that's when I know I'll be safe. And I can hit them like three times as they uh, jump over my head. And now there's only one battle dog remaining, so there we go. This used to be a way longer uh, boss fight. Um, because, you know, the setup of this is quite weird because there's like a group of enemies instead of one enemy. And uh, also, I used to take it a lot slower, but this was also found uh, when it was featured in Speed Bump Don't Run, which is uh, this project which is organized by Smite and Author Blues. And yeah, it was featured back in December, and for a month people tried to improve the speedrun time, and I took part in it as well, so uh, that was a lot of fun. It really brought out a lot of potential in this uh, speedrun, really. A lot more than I uh, expected, really. So, now we are in this level, uh, we got a password Fly Home Lazy Sword, and that's actually the last password we're gonna get in this game. But it's not the end of the game, funnily enough. We basically have to get through the... Oh, crap. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. We basically have to get through the next three stages um, without a password, uh, without getting new passwords. So it's quite a bit of a stretch, but it might be doable, especially with uh, something that's going to come up really soon. So let's see. I'm going to watch out here. So this going to be... Of course, more birds with uh, coconuts and all that. It's pretty scary, but that's uh, the life of Storm Jackson, I guess. Sometimes birds throw coconuts at you. You got these, uh, I guess, surprise coconuts. At least you also have uh, some backups here, like these gems. I uh, go for that. All right, I guess, um, yeah, there's not much else to say here. It's probably a good time for a donation or uh, any other info if you have them. Sure, we have a $20 donation from Ishbinder saying INGAVA, or actually shouting it all caps with <laughs> exclamation mark. Thank you so much for that. Thank and you. of course, if you want to support us in a different way, not just subs or uh, donations, you can maybe consider buying some stuff for your closet. Like if you scroll down below the stream, there's a picture of Three Handsome Man, and if you click on that, you go to the ESA merch store where you can buy ESA t-shirts and hoodies, and of course, that would support us as well. And you can get a new uh, t-shirt made. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was uh, mentioned in the, the comment by uh, Ishbinder. Um, Ingava is basically uh, the greeting that Storm Jackson uses with his friends. Also not featured in the game, but featured in the story. Um, so Ingava is basically uh, what they say to one another. And I also mentioned that as soon as he do does that victory post, he does shout Ingava. I've made it a channel point thing uh, on my own uh, channel. And, uh, I, w I was wondering about that. I was googling it, and it was a city <laughs> in Niger Nigeria, so I was really curious. What oh, it is? I, I never yes. realized it, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's probably not the only thing that's uh, referring to uh, real life stuff. But uh, yeah, it's always been a, a fun thing, really, to uh, say. But uh, I I'm not surprised at all that it has uh, its roots in uh, existing things. Alright, so what you saw me do there, uh, I had a cherry uh, gum left over from uh, the boss fight in level 4, so I have carried it over for like at least two levels, so that's pretty far. And using it here to get a skip, so I don't have to do all these uh, platforming uh, sections. So now we have all these uh, floating islands and gargoyles, I guess, and... Uh, so this level is where we're going to see something pretty significant. Um, there's going to be a um, level skip, which is actually found in the manual. So not only does the um, manual have a story, but there's also some um, hints hidden throughout the pages in the manual. And if you decode them, you'll actually get a um, certain thing that you need to do, which we're going to do right here. They basically say, grab this coconut and then we perform a series of actions which sets up this um, warp. Shout out to Boat7. 
So now we go here. We have some uh, one ups we can grab for marathon safety, I guess. And if we grab this rock, this instantly takes us to chapter six. So we have skipped uh, two and a half level, or well, basically two levels because this was basically at the end of uh, 5-2. It doesn't skip all that much. I would say about two to three minutes in total. But it's still a pretty significant time save. So uh, yeah, welcome to the Lost City of Urnum. This is uh, where uh, you know the uh, the the voice in the sword came from. And this is also one of those levels that has seen a major overhaul as to uh, how to get through the level and also ghosts. But yeah, use the cherry gum here once again, uh, flying through the air, trying to maneuver so that we don't get hit by that cloud because, uh, yeah, clouds can break all kinds of bubblegum apparently, uh, which is pretty interesting, I guess. But this part used to be a lot slower. I used to climb all the way up and then fall down again and then use Great Bubblegum to sort of bounce myself to the top of this and then I would take these uh, these platforms and uh, that was a lot longer. Also, some of these ghosts, um, they duplicate themselves so you have to watch out for uh, that when you try to hit them. But yeah, with all of that, it's actually a much uh, shorter level. Part two. So in this um, chapter, the story refers to uh, the fact that Skull Jagger is going to be encountered here once again. Well, it's actually it's saying two things: that Storm Jackson will lose his sword in the beginning, and that they will fight Skull Jagger at the end. Um, I can tell you right away. Storm Jackson won't lose his sword, and Skull Jagger also doesn't appear in this uh, chapter, so that's where um, the story and the game start to diverge by quite a bit. But I guess that's uh, the nature of uh, making games that you can't always carry everything over. It would have been interesting to see though, because um, there's also a couple of other characters that uh, Storm Jackson is supposed to travel with, um, namely his friend who, with whom he does that uh, battle greeting, and also a half sister of that. Uh, uh, that was uh, scary. Uh, ha uh, the his friend's half sister, half sister. So you know, there's, there's quite a lot going on apparently. But again, uh, nothing uh, that you see here. Also, these ghosts do cause a lot of lag. You may have noticed that already, but uh, yeah, this is basically... It's also the not just the Lost City, but also just Lag City, I guess. It's really down to having many enemies on the screen at the same time, really. Which does slow down things at the most random moments. But apart from that, it's a pretty doable level. You just have to... As soon as you're aware of... Um, certain you know cues as to where you're supposed to stand positioning and that it's not entirely uh, horrible although I've had some tr uh, I've had my fair share of problems with it in the beginning but with practice uh, comes uh, certain safeties I guess okay so here is I think one of the final instances of us using um, cherry bubblegum to skip things just gonna wait for the uh, ghosts, because they tend to sort of zigzag towards you, which is pretty scary. Also, did you know that you can instantly activate your bubblegum by standing on moving platforms? This is really handy to know in real life, just so you know. If you stand on the moving platform next time around and you uh, blow your bubblegum, it will activate instantly, so uh, that's pretty good to know. So these weapons, um, they're the so-called plasma blasters. And that's what I didn't want Skulljacker to know, that those are there, because if they would fall into bad hands, you know, bad things would happen. But we don't meet Skulljacker, of course. Instead, we have a ghost. A massive ghost. Uh, there we go. Spoopy ghost! Ah! Big spoopy ghost. I mean, probably no surprise since uh, this level has been nothing but ghosts. Just gonna go over here. I have to be somewhat careful though, um, there's of course lots of uh, enemies uh, coming towards me. And what I try to do is I try to hit repeatedly and get it at a certain height so that I can uh, sort of run underneath uh, this uh, ghost. 
Ooh, gotta watch out for that one. I think I should be able to make it. There we go. I tried to finish up in the middle somewhere so that I can instantly grab the uh, exit gem. All right, and chapter seven. This is actually the final level. Um, this chapter is called the final battle. So basically, the crew that I travel with, just incl uh, including me as well, they grab one of the plasma blasters and they bring it down to this battlefield that's happening because there's a war going on as well. And they try to stop the battleships and such. Must be a pretty uh, happy thing. Anyway, here is uh, the final cherry skip. Use that to get ourselves on top of all of this. There's some more clouds over here. Ooh, okay, that was pretty scary. It was a bit lower than where I wanted to end, but it's okay. We have skipped a lot of stuff. That would have uh, slowed down quite a bit. In a way, this level feels like a mix-up of 3-3 um, and the very first level. Like the Stuff like this feels like it is directly copied from the from those levels, really. Also with this uh, ending on the bridge, it feels very similar. So you also see those cannons, and you wonder what do those do? Do they even do anything? They do. It was a thing that I wasn't aware of until um, after I started uh, learning the speedrun. So you can actually hold up in front of those cannons, and you can fire them at um, you know enemies in the background. And that way you can actually get certain items, like you can get gems, but you can, you can also get actual lives. Which, considering um, they're pretty hard to get by in the actual game, is not a bad thing at all. Although, of course, if you know the warp, then you get a lot of uh, extra lives. So. Otherwise, um, what you need to do is you need to collect uh, 25 gems, and those will give you an extra life. But as you may have seen, it's pretty hard to keep your gems, so good luck trying to find 25 gems and actually keeping them. <laughs> so you better get lucky on that one. Okay, gonna see if I can... Oh, okay, I need to grab something now. Uh, it's pretty scary. Now it's the flies that are zigzagging <laughs> across the room. It's a pretty scary uh, part sometimes. I also grabbed that for a backup, just in case. Like, if this were a world record grind, I would have hoped for uh, enough gems so that I don't have to take the detour, but it's a pretty small one regardless. So now we get up this rooftop, do our victory pose, and there's uh, two more levels to go. 7-3 is gonna be a pretty tough one. It's a long one and a tough one. When I first learned this run, um, this was one of the levels I had most trouble with, because there's a lot of uh, stuff going on. And this is the last time you'll be hearing uh, not the Eye of the Tiger, so enjoy. <laughs> so this is one of those levels where you have a lot of benefit from having uh, red gems, because you see lots of soldiers uh, approaching that will, uh, or guards that will shoot at you, this uh, so-called Kiltish army. And with red gems, you're able to just fire off um, projectiles and you can still make your way out pretty easily. So I'm gonna see if I can get past this large group of flies, see if I can uh, make that happen. It's always a scary part. Okay, so that's another um, great bubblegum that I picked up there. And that's actually the main reason why this um, run is a lot safer compared to when I started out learning this run, because um, we fight Skulljagger once again at the end, surprise, surprise. But it just be really tough, like there was a setup where you would either get lucky and you would be able to, you know, mash attack Skulljagger, or you would get hit and you would die. It, you would never be able to tell and it would always make the run very scary, but this great bubblegum has made everything like a thousand times easier, so... Also some blind jumps, don't worry about it. This works out exactly according to plan. See, two flies on the right, one on the left. Two of which I have to duck for. And... I'll do this. Okay, and... Another... Drop there. Okay, we're getting close to the end of the game. And, yeah. As you can probably expect by now, this is going to be a total cheese fight, so... 
I would get ready on time. Uh, that is, as soon as I deal the final hit of the bus uh, on the bus, so uh, that should be soon enough. I'm just going to stand over here and just uh, relax for a brief bit. Skulljacker is trying really hard to uh, defeat me, but no chance. So, a couple more hits. Get ready. And time. So, there we go. We uh, read the island of Vesica. Ingava Storm. So it gives us a little bit of lore that is uh, not directly in the story as far as I know. So they say, your amazing skill and bravery have at last freed Westica from the cruel dominion of Captain Skullchecker. On this fine historic day, watch in triumph as rank upon rank of Keltish troops once the scourge of Westica retreat across the ocean in defeat. And at your hands, Storm Jackson, Skullchecker himself has suffered the ultimate disgrace. Not only has he been defeated and his empire taken away, but he has been magically transformed into the loneliest creature of all, a rat. Celebrate Storm, dance and sing through the streets of Tuskamesh. Oh, by the way, um, that city that we uh, wound up getting through like in the entire time, or, or multiple times, that's the street of Tuskamesh. It's a pretty big city apparently, or just very central. They also say, but be forewarned, even as you celebrate, a rat is making its way quickly through the nighttime jungles. Curvying, or scurrying toward the lost city of Urnum. Its purpose? One can only guess. But this much can be said. There may be a time, Storm Jackson, when you'll once again be called upon to save Westica and the world from a cruel monster named Skulljagger. <laughs> so they were clearly saying up for a sequel. Um, I can tell you the sequel didn't happen. Which is, uh, I guess, unfortunate. You know, seeing that the story is pretty, well, I said it before, pretty ambitious and pretty uh, big in a way. That would have been inter interesting to see that uh, become a thing, but oh well. So yeah, I hope I uh, somehow explained the story well enough. It's kind of hard to do uh, because there's so much of it, so I went with a certain point. So hopefully uh, that went well enough. All right, um, I guess, yeah, that's a, that's a run. I hope you uh, enjoyed. I can definitely recommend uh, giving this game a try. It's really quirky. It's very 90s in a way because you know bubblegum and there's so much that I really like about this game. So uh, yeah, I can also, uh, rec yeah, if you want to speed run it, uh, be sure to hit me up uh, on Discord or uh, any other uh, social channels. And uh, let's see, uh, yeah, shoutouts. Uh, I've got a couple. Uh, first of all, I mentioned uh, Speed Bump, um, this uh, project by uh, Spites and Author Blues. I want to do a massive shout outs uh, to them because um, it did a lot for this as a speedrun. It made it a lot more exciting and interesting. And uh, also, shouts to the runners who uh, made this, uh, yeah, the speedrun it is now. So, uh, yeah, thank you. and. Um, yeah, I guess also um, shoutouts to ESA for letting this in. Uh, it's really nice that I finally got to show this off uh, in this uh, marathon. And also with the new strats, I've been looking forward to that really. So uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Um, and be sure to keep donating. I guess we're yes. about to get ready for the next run. So. Uh, yeah, I'm we'll gonna switch over, throw it over there. Bit. Thank you so much uh, for running Jungle Storm. Uh, the, You're welcome. The saying, you know, I came here to chew bubblegum and kick ass has a definitely a new meaning for me now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, thanks again for uh, running. Thank you everyone who had donated during this run or during the last couple runs. This uh, is the end of my shift uh, for donation reading. Uh, after in the intermission, uh, Fruit McGovern will take over. And he will uh, entertain you for the next couple hours with uh, some more runs. Coming up is Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. That's going to be a pretty cool run. And of course, lots more stuff coming up in a couple next hours. And, well, there's still three more days to go, pretty much. So Yeah, I'll be, I'll, be back, um, I'll be back later this week with uh, Back to the Future on uh, Monday. So uh, that's another pretty janky game for the NDS. So, uh, yeah. Hope you see, hope to see you then as well. Make sure to tune in for that. Monday is our last day, but it's a full day as well. And yeah, that's all for now. We'll head into the intermission and hopefully see you guys right after.
Take care.